Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service of morning prayer this Sunday. My name is Annette James, and you're very welcome to share this service with Christchurch, Toxford Park, and St. Michael in the Hamlet with St. Andrew. I hope you're all well this morning, and we're going to start our service with some opening prayers, and then we're going to sing our first hymn, uh, which Michael is going to play for us on his viola, and the words would will appear on the screen. Let's pray. Jesus says, I am the way for you, and so we come to follow Christ. Jesus says, I am the truth for you, and so we come to dwell in the light. Jesus says, I am the life for you, and so we come, leaving behind all else to which we cling. Amen. Now we're going to sing together. Our first hymn is Do Not Be Afraid, For I Have Redeemed You. Thank you, Michael. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of God's presence set our hearts on fire with love, now and forever. Amen. And we have a treat this morning because Chris is going to uh, read um, Psalm 121 to us. Before he does that, he's going to talk a little bit about what that psalm means to him. Chris. Hi everyone. Let's ask me to introduce our psalm for today, which is Psalm 121. The psalm isn't one of David's psalms, but it's called a song of ascents. And apparently, according to the theologians, it's the psalm that the Israelite people would have used as they were on one of their pilgrimages to Mount Zion. When I was thinking about this particular psalm, it seemed very apt and appropriate for 
the position that we find ourselves in as we live through these strange, difficult, challenging times. It's a psalm which reflects on the constancy of God and the fact that God does not abandon us even when it's difficult to see exactly what's going on or understand why these things are happening. We recorded a short video which hopefully will be played immediately after I've finished speaking. In that video there's a bit more imagery to be pondered. We were filming on what was a brightish day but the hills of North Wales were somewhat shrouded in cloud and mist and that's a bit like it feels at the moment isn't it? That to some extent we know that God is there but sometimes that mist and cloud does shroud our vision from time to time but we're assured of the constancy of God's presence and his protection for us. So here's Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and for evermore. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Our next reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 15 to 21. And Anna Morton is going to read it for us. Thank you, Anna. John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. The promise of the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of the truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments will keep them, and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will become will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Anna. It's really great this week to be collaborating with Michael, Chris and Anna. When planning the structure of this service, Chris reminded me that uh, he had always loved the Psalms and often would choose a Psalm to be part of the service. And so this week we decided we'd have a Psalm, which actually I thought was very apt indeed. I love this Psalm too. It's positive, it's encouraging. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to draw on the psalm uh, and the feeling behind it and also on the lectionary readings for this week which are also full of encouragement. Um, Anna read the gospel reading. Uh, there was also another reading from Peter's gospel which we haven't read but I'm going to refer to it anyway and if you want to go and look it up afterwards then um, please do so. So in the gospel reading um, John outlines what is both the simplest and the most complex statement of the mystery of the relationship between Jesus and with our tri triune God. In verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, then keep my commandments. You'll recall that Jesus' commandments are few to love God to love your neighbour and to love yourself. Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will send you an advocate 
who will be with you forever. The third part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And that's it. That's all Jesus asks of us, to love. John goes on to give us some more encouragement as he reminds us of Jesus' words. The world will not see me, but you'll see me. Because I live, you will also live. And this is the complexity. When we are awakened to God's love, then we become bound up in a relationship with the greatest love of all. And then we're able to see the world in a different way. And Peter, in the reading that we didn't have from 1 Peter 3, uh, that's verse 13 to 22, helps us to understand what this means. Peter was writing to people who had every reason to despair about social trends or about the state of the church and the frustration of life. But instead of goading his followers into railing against their frustrations, Peter tells those newly awakened to God's love not to share their frustrations, but to share their hope. This is what Peter says in verse 15 again. Be ready at all times to answer anyone who asks you to explain the hope you have in you. Always be ready to give an account of the hope you have in you. Peter was true to the knowledge that he'd learned from following Jesus. Jesus constantly drew the hope that was in people. This is what Jesus has for the world, hope. And it's the message that all followers have, all followers of Jesus have for each other and for everyone, a message of hope for men, for women, for children. Jesus wasn't swayed by popular or political opinion. He was clear that his mess, me, mission was to reconcile all things to the source of all love. Jesus was strong and courageous, and he brought a revolution. A revolution in the sense that it was a different way to be, a different lens with which to view humanity and the whole of creation. Jesus encouraged and enabled. He stood with people, alongside them. He challenged strong people to show their vulnerability. Those who were weak to, to find strength. Jesus drew in those who were excluded and enabled people to find a new direction. And he brought people together, not for personal gain, but to bring hope to the whole community. The psalm that Chris read to us, Psalm 121, tells that God will be alongside us whatever life brings. And the psalmist tells that the God is the creator of the whole world and the creator of the world is walking with us through every day and through all our days. God promise us to, promises to be with us in the easy and in the difficult paths of life. So during these days of uncertainty and anxiety, where people are anxious in all different aspects of life, people in nursing homes, people in hospital, people with underlying conditions, those shielding and those wondering what to do next, living with the uncertainty that we have about well, what's going to happen if we change our behaviour. People across the world need to hear the true certainty of God's presence and God's love for each one of us through the whole of creation. This week we remembered Julian of Norwich, a woman who spent her whole life isolated in one small room. As a young woman, she had suffered a serious illness and during that time, had a vision of Jesus. We read that she spent many hours listening to the voice of Jesus and the rest of her life she spent contemplating on what she heard. 
I love the story of uh, Julian's conversations with Jesus. She says, and in this, he showed me a little thing, the quantity of a hazelnut lying in the palm of my hand. And I looked at it with the eye of my understanding and thought, well, what may this be? And Jesus answered thus, it is all that is made. I marvelled at how it might last, for I thought it might have fallen into nothing for its littleness, and was answered in my understanding. It lasts and ever shall, for God loves it. And so have all things their being, by the love of God. And Julian writes, in this little thing I saw three properties. The first is that God made it. The second, that God loves it. And the third, that God keeps it. This is God's promise for each of us. God made us. God the creator. God loves us. God who stands aside us. And God keeps us in love wherever we are and whatever happens in life. I think that's worth contemplating on in these days of uncertainty. And in a moment, we're going to affirm our faith together. But I'm just going to share some words that you might have heard before from Julian of Norwich. And I'm going to share them again at the end of the service. You'll recognise these words. All shall be well. All shall be well. And all manner of things shall be well. Amen. So now let us affirm our faith together as we say, I believe in God who is love and who has given the earth to all people. I believe in Jesus Christ who came, came to heal us and free us from all forms of oppression. I believe in the Spirit of God who works in and through all who are turned towards the truth. I believe in the community of faith which is called to be at the service of all people. I believe in God's power to transform and transfigure, fulfilling the promise of a new heaven and a new earth where justice and peace will flourish. Amen. Let us pray. During our prayers, I'm going to read uh, something which is called The Statement of Interdependence. And it's from a book called uh, Women's Prayers. And it's by a woman called Nicholas Slee. And um, I've heard this read before and felt that it really found some profound Christian truths for our time. So let us pray. I do not stand alone, but with others to support me, I will stand my ground. I do not see the way, but with others to walk with me, I can make a path. I do not possess the truth, but with others to witness to what they know, I will be able to discern what is right. I cannot master all skills, but with others who will lend their accomplishments, I can do enough. I cannot carry every burden, but with others to share it, I may bear my own load. I cannot meet all needs, but with others to nourish and replenish me, I will be able to give enough. I do not have limitless free choice, but with others to consult, I will make my own choices gladly. I will not always be content, but with others to laugh with me, I will regain my equanimity. I am not invincible, but with others to reach out a hand, I may learn from my mistakes and start again. I cannot be perfect, but with others to make up the shortfall of my imperfection, 
I can be content to be good enough. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. I first heard that prayer being read um, by Helen and Martin Randall um, on Shetland and thought it was so moving. I wanted to share it with you. And now as we gather our prayers together, let us pray, share in the prayer, which is a family prayer, known by so many people of faith across the world, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Let's say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we have a blessing. May the God who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you with power to go forth and proclaim the gospel. Amen. And once again, as I said earlier, I'm going to re-emphasize the words from Julian of Norwich. In these uncertain times, all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Thank you for sharing in this act of worship. And we're going to finish with um, another song, which is Michael's going to play on his viola again. And we recognise that Jesus is our hope and that the spirit which he brings to us sets us free. The spirit lives to set us free. Feel free to sing it loud and make a noise where you are. Amen.